And the Oscar goes to... Dances with Wolves, Jim Wilson and Kevin Costner. Dances with Wolves wasn't just a movie. It was a story that took audiences deeper into the American frontier than ever before. It was 1990. Kevin Costner was in the director's chair and starring as Lieutenant Dunbar, a Civil War soldier who finds himself living among the Lakota Sioux. But beyond the silver screen, Dances with Wolves had a whole other life full of secrets and surprises waiting to be uncovered. This video will take you behind the scenes of this iconic film, showing you what really went into making it one of the most award-winning westerns ever. Buckle up, because we're diving into the fascinating world of Dances with Wolves, The Unseen Struggles. Michael Blake, a screenwriter with a passion for stories about the Plains Indians, dreamt of bringing his vision to the big screen. He had written a screenplay called Dances with Wolves, but his journey to Hollywood wasn't exactly paved with gold. He pitched the idea to Kevin Costner, who was a friend. Intrigued by the story but cautious about the competitive screenplay market, Costner had a bold suggestion. He urged Blake to turn it into a novel, believing its epic scope and immersive detail would grab the attention of studios more effectively than a standalone script. With this encouragement, Blake embarked on a challenging journey. Driven by his vision and determination, he spent months meticulously crafting the narrative, often finding himself writing in his car or crashing on friends' couches, including Costner's own. The process wasn't without its hardships. Despite pouring his heart and soul into the book, Dances with Wolves faced a barrage of rejections from numerous publishers. Undeterred, Blake persisted sending his manuscript out again and again. Finally, after over 30 rejections, he received a glimmer of hope when a small publishing house called Fawcett decided to take a chance on his story. This marked a pivotal moment, opening the door for Blake's novel to reach a wider audience and pave the way for its eventual cinematic adaptation into the award-winning film we know today. From Strife to Success Kevin Costner, ever the supportive friend, wanted to see Michael Blake succeed. Before Dances with Wolves became a cinematic phenomenon, Costner attempted to help Blake break into the industry by setting him up with numerous interviews at various studios. Unfortunately, each meeting turned into a disaster. According to Costner's later accounts, Blake, fueled by frustration and desperation, would argue with studio representatives, alienating himself and sabotaging any potential opportunities. Despite the friction, Blake continued to work on Dances with Wolves, residing with Costner while writing. He desperately wanted Costner's feedback and constantly pestered him to read the unfinished manuscript. Costner, wary of their recent clashes, consistently refused, and Blake's presence soon became a strain on their friendship. Eventually, Blake felt unwelcome and moved to Arizona, scraping by on a meager $3.35 an hour washing dishes in a Chinese restaurant. In a moment of desperation, he reached out to Costner for financial assistance. Though their relationship, Costner responded with compassion by sending Blake a sleeping bag and a portable stove. Even in challenging circumstances, Blake's tenacity wouldn't be stifled. He continued writing, finally finishing the Dances with Wolves manuscript. Unable to ignore his friend's pleas any longer, Costner hesitantly agreed to read the completed work. As he read through the pages, something extraordinary happened. It was the clearest idea for a movie that I had ever read, Costner later marveled. That moment marked a turning point for both men, transforming their tumultuous friendship into a powerful collaboration that would change the landscape of cinema. The Directorial Dilemma of Dances with Wolves after making the bold decision to bring Dances with Wolves to life, Kevin Costner knew the next crucial step was finding the right director. Determined to ensure the film's integrity, he entrusted the script to three directors whose names he has respectfully chosen to keep private. Each, while acknowledging the story's potential, proposed significant changes that clashed with Costner's vision. Some envisioned trimming the opening Civil War sequence, deeming it unnecessary. Others found the film's length daunting and recommended cuts. Perhaps most controversially, one director argued against the central romance between a white character and a Lakota woman, fearing it would fall into cliches. These disagreements, while respectful, 
highlighted the inherent risk of entrusting his beloved project to another director. Costner, a man known for his fierce independence and unwavering commitment, realized that the only way to ensure the film's integrity was to take the reins himself. It was a monumental decision, a leap of faith from actor to director, fueled by his profound understanding of the story and his faith in its potential impact. This bold move would not only shape the destiny of Dances with Wolves, but also launch Costner on a new and exhilarating chapter in his career. Financial Struggles Facing a wall of rejection from American studios who deemed the film too risky, Costner refused to let his vision die. Determined to bring Dances with Wolves to life, he embarked on a bold quest for funding. Instead of focusing solely on Hollywood, he set his sights beyond the borders, seeking support from international investors. His persistence paid off when he secured a crucial seed investment from a small group of foreign financiers. However, this initial funding was only a fraction of the film's estimated $15 million budget. Undeterred by the financial hurdles, Costner took a leap of faith and began filming with the limited resources available. The pressure was immense, but his strong belief in the story fueled his determination. Fortunately, his gamble paid off when Orion Pictures, impressed by the early footage, stepped in. They agreed to pour $10 million into the production, offering a much-needed lifeline. But even with Orion's contribution, the costs of filming in the expansive South Dakota wilderness and meticulously recreating the Lakota Sioux culture proved to be more than the combined budgets could handle. When all was said and done, Dances with Wolves ballooned $3 million over budget. Costner, by then a rising star with a growing bank account thanks to his success in films like Field of Dreams, stepped up and personally covered the shortfall. This financial sacrifice, a major gamble for an actor not yet established as a director, showed the depth of his belief in the film's artistic merit and its potential to redefine the Western genre. The Lakota language in Dances with Wolves. The Lakota Sioux language resonated throughout Dances with Wolves, with more than a quarter of the script requiring translation. This was a bold departure from traditional westerns, where Native American characters typically communicated in English. However, translating Lakota posed a significant challenge. Finding individuals fluent in the language, let alone skilled translators, was incredibly difficult. This was where Doris Leader Charge came in. At the time, she was an educator at South Dakota's Sinte Glesk University renowned for her expertise in Lakota language and culture. When director Kevin Costner heard about her, he immediately sent the script to her, and about three weeks later, he received a complete translation. It was a monumental feat, considering she had never even encountered a movie script before. Recognizing the invaluable resource leader charge represented, Costner didn't stop at mere translation. He extended an invitation for leader charge to not only guide the actors with their pronunciation and delivery, but also to take on the speaking role of Pretty Shield, wife of the Lakota warrior Ten Bears. Initially hesitant due to her teaching commitments, leader charge was persuaded after Costner contacted the university president and secured an extended leave for her. The Buffalo scene was real. Forget fancy computer tricks or special stunts. The amazing Buffalo Stampede and Dances with Wolves was all real. No film magic, just 3,500 angry buffalo charging across the plains. But filming this wasn't a walk in the park. Each day they had one chance to capture the chaos. Why? These weren't trained animals waiting on cue. Wranglers spent half the morning guiding the herd into position, and once those beasts started running, they wouldn't stop for miles. Producer Jim Wilson described the process to Entertainment Weekly, saying that they would start herding at 5 a.m., hoping they would be ready to run 11. It was a whole production eight days, 20 Wranglers, a helicopter, and 10 pickup trucks rigged with cameras. They chased the thunderous herd across the prairie, hoping to snag the perfect shot of hooves pounding and dust swirling. So the next time you watch that scene, remember, you're not seeing some computer creation. You're witnessing the awe-inspiring power of nature, captured in all its raw beauty and unpredictable might. And that's pretty darn impressive, even without the fancy stuff. Kevin Costner's Fearless Stunts in Dances with Wolves Kevin Costner's dedication to Dances with Wolves went beyond directing and starring in the film. He committed to performing 95% of his own stunts, including riding, shooting, fighting, and even the iconic wolf dancing scenes. This was no easy feat. 
The stunts were physically demanding and sometimes risky. Costner's commitment left the crew on edge as they constantly worried about his safety. But Costner wouldn't be deterred. He believed that performing his own stunts would make the film more authentic and immerse viewers in the story. Well, things got especially hairy during the buffalo hunt scene. Remember that part where a bunch of riders charge into a herd of buffalo? Well, in one take, another rider accidentally cut in front of Costner's horse, sending him flying. Everyone on set froze, fearing the worst. But Costner, being the trooper he is, just brushed himself off, hopped on his stunt double's horse, and finished the scene like nothing happened. This incident highlighted both Costner's commitment to authenticity and his resilience in the face of danger. His willingness to take on so many physical challenges added a layer of realism to the film that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. And his quick recovery from the fall showed his determination to deliver the best performance he could, even in the midst of unexpected chaos. Of course, not everything went according to plan. There were certainly times when stunt doubles stepped in for the more dangerous maneuvers. But Costner's unwavering commitment to performing his own stunts set him apart and contributed to the film's overall success. So next time you watch Dances with Wolves and see John Dunbar charging across the prairie on horseback, remember that it was likely Costner himself pulling off those impressive stunts. The Wolves on set. Filming with wolves turned out to be quite the adventure. While Costner's character Dunbar forms a close bond with a wolf named Two Socks, the reality behind bringing this relationship to life involved two furry stars, Buck and Teddy. Now, while trained, any animal lover knows, trained wolves still hold on to their wild ways. This meant buckets of patience and no doubt even more delicious meat scraps were essential to keep Buck and Teddy cooperative. The filmmakers weren't above a little embarrassment to capture the perfect shot either. Behind-the-scenes footage shows Wilson and Costner desperate to coax a howl from the wolves, resorting to their own best wolf call impressions. These attempts, while admittedly not award-winning, showcase the dedication and humor that went into creating the film's most captivating animal relationships. Working with wild animals comes with its own set of challenges, and the crew of Dances with Wolves embrace the unconventional. Their dedication to authenticity meant accepting that not everything could be perfectly controlled, and sometimes the best performances came from the most unpredictable stars. So, next time you see two socks on screen, remember, that howl might have been inspired by a chorus of human howls, not just the wind on the prairie. The Unexpected Stars of Dances with Wolves Wild Dances with Wolves featured a magnificent herd of 3,500 wild buffalo to capture the sweeping grandeur of the plains. Filming also required some close-up shots with domesticated buffalo. That's where two unexpected stars came in. First up was Mammoth, a buffalo owned by none other than legendary singer-songwriter Neil Young. Mammoth, already accustomed to the hustle and bustle of touring life, proved perfect for the film's intimate scenes. His calm demeanor and willingness to cooperate made him a valuable asset to the production. For the more action-packed buffalo moments, the crew enlisted the help of Cody, the mascot of a South Dakota meat manufacturer. Cody, known for his impressive physique and energetic spirit, was chosen for the scene where a young Lakota brave falls off his horse and gets charged by a buffalo. But getting Cody to run on cue wasn't as simple as saying, action! Producer Jim Wilson told Entertainment Weekly that Cody's true motivation was Oreos. All it took was a glimpse of the black and white treat, and Cody would take off like a bullet straight for you, as producer Jim Wilson told Entertainment Weekly. These furry co-stars, each with their own unique personalities and quirks, added a touch of levity and charm to the filming process. Their contributions further enriched the film's portrayal of the relationship between the Lakota people and the buffalo, a vital element of their culture and way of life. Casting Against the Grain In Dances with Wolves, Kevin Costner broke away from the typical Hollywood casting mold. Instead of pairing himself with a much younger actress for the female lead, he set his sights on someone older and more experienced. This was Mary McDonnell, then a 37-year-old stage actress, who breathe life into the character of Stands with a Fist. Stands with a Fist is a white woman raised by the Lakota Sioux tribe after being orphaned as a child. She serves as a bridge between John Dunbar, the film's protagonist, and the Lakota community, eventually falling in love with Dunbar. Costner's decision to cast McDonnell against the typical damsel-in-distress archetype was deliberate. He wanted someone who could embody the strength, resilience, and intelligence of Stands with a Fist, a woman who had carved her own path within the Lakota society. 
McDonald embraced the challenge wholeheartedly. She dedicated herself to learning Lakota lines quickly and flawlessly, capturing the nuances of the language and pronunciation. Additionally, she mastered the delicate balance of portraying Stands with a Fist's gradual return to speaking English after years of immersion in Lakota life. This transition, from speaking Lakota with ease to hesitantly relearning English, added a layer of complexity and depth to the character. McDonald's performance resonated deeply with audiences and critics alike. Her portrayal of Stands with a Fist earned her an Oscar nomination. While her windblown hair may have drawn attention, it was her raw emotional power and nuanced portrayal of a woman defying traditional gender roles that truly stole the show. Casting McDonald was a bold move that paid off handsomely for Dances with Wolves. It challenged conventional Hollywood practices and resulted in a powerful, unforgettable performance that continues to resonate with viewers today. Dances with Wolves silenced the naysayers. Word of Dances with Wolves troubled production spread like wildfire through Hollywood. Whispers of a ballooning budget, a demanding director, and a virtually unknown leading lady all stoked doubts. Some insiders, gleefully predicting disaster, nicknamed it Costner's Last Stand, while others, remembering the epic financial flop of Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate, dubbed it Kevin's Gate. The film's critics weren't shy about sharing their doubts. They scoffed at the idea of a three-hour Western finding an audience, mocked Costner's decision to direct and star, and questioned the wisdom of focusing on a Native American perspective in a genre known for romanticizing cowboys. But when Dances with Wolves finally waltzed onto the big screen, the tune changed. The film's sweeping landscapes, raw emotions, and Costner's performance captivated audiences worldwide. Critics, who had sharpened their knives for a cinematic massacre, were forced to eat their words. Instead of the predicted bomb, Dances with Wolves became a box office behemoth, grossing a staggering nearly $425 million. It swept the 1991 Academy Awards, taking home seven Oscars, including Best Picture and Best Director for Costner. The film's success not only silenced the naysayers, but also proved that Hollywood's tried-and-true formulas weren't the only path to success. Dances with Wolves dared to be different to tell a story that challenged expectations and resonated with audiences on a deeper level. And in doing so, it not only became a critical and commercial triumph. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. Dances with Wolves wasn't just a box office smash, it rewrote the whole genre. You never realized this about Dances with Wolves, but it wasn't your typical shoot 'em up It dared to show Native Americans not as savages, but as a complex, vibrant culture facing brutal displacement. The film used actual Lakota dialogue, a first for Hollywood, and featured stunning landscapes that captured the spirit of the Great Plains. But the road to glory wasn't easy. Studios were hesitant about a Western with no cowboys or gunfights. Costner, a rising star, bet big on directing and starring pouring his heart into the project. The gamble paid off. Dances with Wolves raked in awards, including Best Picture and Best Director for Costner. It revitalized the Western genre, inspiring a new wave of films that explored the complexities of American history and the relationship between settlers and native peoples. So, which other films do you think pushed the boundaries of the genre? Let's keep the conversation rolling in the comments. The strategic gender-specific marketing of Dances with Wolves Part of Dances with Wolves' box office magic was its ability to captivate both men and women. Back in 1990, this wasn't the norm. Studios often made one-size-fits-all trailers and ads, but not Orion Pictures, the distributor behind Dances with Wolves. They took a bold step, creating separate marketing campaigns for each gender. For the ladies, Orion leaned into the film's tender love story. The trailer featured sweeping shots of Costner's John Dunbar and Mary McDonald's Stands with a Fist gazing into each other's eyes under the vast prairie sky. For the men, Orion amped up the action. The trailer showcased Dunbar's gunslinging skills and the film's thrilling Buffalo Stampede sequence. This clever strategy paid off big time. Dances with Wolves attracted diverse audiences, becoming a massive critical and commercial success. It won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director for Costner Orion's innovative marketing campaign, proved that understanding your target audience and tailoring your message accordingly can be a recipe for box office gold. Dances with Wolves became a pioneer in gender-specific marketing, paving the way for studios to cater to different demographics in the years to come. The Roller Coaster Ride of Orion Pictures Orion Pictures, 
the studio behind hits like Robocop and Platoon, stumbled in the late 80s. A string of flops sent their stock plummeting by 50% and left them a massive $500 million in debt. As David Forbes, Orion's marketing chief, put it, we desperately needed a win. Then came Dances with Wolves. The epic western stormed into theaters captivating audiences and critics alike. It took home a whopping seven Oscars, including Best Picture and Best Director for Kevin Costner. But even this incredible success wasn't enough to save Orion. The following year, Orion released another powerhouse, the chilling thriller Silence of the Lambs. But the financial damage was too deep. In 1991, Orion filed for bankruptcy. For a while, it seemed like the curtain had fallen on Orion's story. But Hollywood has a way of rewriting narratives. In 1996, Orion was acquired by MGM, and in 2014, the iconic logo reappeared on the big screen once more, gracing the horror film The Town That Dreaded Sundown. Today, Orion remains a part of the MGM family, operating as a smaller label focused on releasing art house films and smaller budget projects. While its golden age of producing major blockbusters may be over, Orion's legacy lives on through its library of beloved classics and its reminder that even in the cutthroat world of Hollywood, sometimes a second chance is possible. Kevin Costner's Journey from Filmmaker to Sioux Tribe Member while the film Dances with Wolves received some criticism for its historical inaccuracies, many members of the Sioux tribe were ultimately pleased with its portrayal of their culture. Unlike many previous westerns that focused on violence and conflict, Dances with Wolves depicted the everyday lives of the Sioux people, showcasing their customs, traditions, and family bonds. This resonated deeply with the tribe, who felt their humanity and dignity were finally being represented on screen. As a token of their appreciation, the Sioux tribe bestowed upon Kevin Costner, the film's director and star, the honor of official membership. This was a rare and meaningful gesture, signifying their acceptance and respect for Costner's efforts to portray their culture authentically. The ceremony involved tying an eagle feather in his hair, a symbol of wisdom and courage, and presenting him with a hand-woven quilt, a representation of community and family. However, the relationship between Costner and the Sioux became more complicated a few years later. In 1992, Costner purchased several hundred acres of land in the Black Hills of South Dakota. This area is considered sacred by the Sioux, as it holds important spiritual and cultural significance. Costner's intention was to build a resort on the land, a project that many members of the tribe strongly opposed. The development of the resort faced numerous challenges, including legal hurdles and protests from the Sioux community. Ultimately, Costner abandoned the project in 2013, acknowledging the concerns raised by the tribe and the difficulties of building on sacred land. The episode with the Black Hills Resort Project highlighted the complex and sometimes delicate relationship between Hollywood and Native American communities. While Dances with Wolves represented a significant step forward in portraying Native American cultures with respect and understanding, it also served as a reminder of the need for sensitivity and collaboration when dealing with sacred lands and traditions. Unpacking Criticisms of Dances with Wolves while Dances with Wolves received widespread acclaim and critical success, it also faced some criticism for its portrayal of the Lakota Sioux people. Some reviewers felt the film leaned toward sentimentality and romanticized the tribe's way of life. David Sirota described the film as a white savior film, suggesting it follows a familiar trope of a white protagonist coming to the rescue of a helpless Native American community. He argued that the narrative prioritizes the white hero's journey over the complexities of the Lakota experience. Native American actor and activist Russell Means offered a more direct critique, comparing the film to Lawrence of Arabia in a way that wasn't complimentary. He felt the film presented a romanticized and inaccurate version of Lakota life, similar to how Lawrence of Arabia romanticized Arab culture. Means further pointed out inaccuracies in the Lakota language used in the film. He highlighted that Lakota has distinct male and female dialects, and some actors, including Costner, used the feminine dialect unintentionally. This detail, while seemingly minor, detracted from the film's authenticity for Means and other Lakota viewers. These criticisms, while not necessarily diminishing the film's artistic merits, raised important questions about representation and historical accuracy. While Dances with Wolves undoubtedly brought the plight of the Lakota to a wider audience, its portrayal of their culture and language remains a point of discussion and debate. There is a sequel. 
While Dances with Wolves ended with John Dunbar and Stands with a Fist settling into Lakota life, author Michael Blake wasn't ready to leave their story behind. You never realize this about Dances with Wolves, but in 2001, Blake published The Holy Road, a sequel that delves deeper into the challenges and triumphs the couple faces as full-fledged members of the Sioux tribe. The Holy Road picks about 11 years after Dances with Wolves with John Dunbar, now fully assimilated into the Lakota way of life. He takes on the name Dances with Wolves and even becomes a respected warrior, known for his bravery and skill. However, the peaceful existence of the tribe is threatened by the encroaching tide of white settlers, determined to expand westward. Blake's novel navigates the complexities of this historical period with both honesty and sensitivity. He avoids simplistic portrayals of good versus evil, instead showcasing the diverse perspectives and motivations of both sides. We see the courage and resilience of the Lakota people as they fight to protect their land and traditions, while also acknowledging the fears and aspirations of the settlers seeking new opportunities in the West. While there have been whispers of a possible miniseries adaptation of The Holy Road, nothing Nothing has been officially confirmed. However, the novel's enduring popularity and Blake's masterful storytelling leave fans hopeful that they may one day see the world of dances with wolves brought to life again on screen. Whether or not The Holy Road makes it to the screen, it remains a powerful and thought-provoking addition to the Dances with Wolves universe. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.